So this should probably go without saying, but people suck. Anytime you're working with people, uh, it's not always going to go smoothly. But even with a bad experience, you can make sure that you learn from your mistakes and you don't let yourself get burned again. So probably the two worst clients I ever had, I had one person where he was, a, he was an up-and-coming rap artist. And he would have me do graphic design for his album. He, back when CDs were a thing. So I would design his album artwork and the artwork that goes on the CD and goes in the jewel case. And this guy was a pain in the ass to work with. I fucking hated working for him. He would do things like I would need the track list so I could throw that on the back of the jewel case. He would send it to me at 10.30 at night on a Sunday and ask for me to have it done so he could go print it first thing Monday morning. There was a few times where... I'd be at work or driving to work because I had a day job at the time and he'd be hitting me up going, oh, this is spelled wrong and this is wrong and this needs to get changed. And I'd be like, okay, I'll make those changes tonight when I get home. And he'd be like, no, I need it right now. I need it right now. I'm on my way to go have it printed now. And I'd be like, well, I, I can't. I'm at work. Nothing I could do. It was always an issue with him. And I think after the third time that happened, I finally told him, look, I'm just copying and pasting what you're sending me. All these rap names are misspelled anyway. They got Z's and dollar signs and things are spelled phonetically instead of grammatically. So if there's something wrong, I have no way of knowing. So proofread your stuff next time before you send it to me. He would also underpay me. Like I think the first album I did for him, like we also were doing a photo shoot because we needed photos and I charged him 250 for the photo shoot and the graphic design, which was which was low. I should have charged him more. And he was like, can you do 150? And I should have said no. But this guy always had a tendency to hit me up whenever I was like hurting for money or bills were coming due and paychecks were few and far between. He always knew when I was hurting for cash. And that's when he would hit me up. And so I went, all right, I'll do it for 150. And then the next album, we didn't do a photo shoot. He provided the photos. And so he was like, well, you're not taking photos. So the last one was 150. You should be able to do this one for 100, right? Because you're not taking photos. And I should have said no. But again, I was hurting for money. So I was like, ah, all right, I'll do it for 100. Third album comes around. It's a volume two of the previous album we did. And he was like, well, you just, just keep the artwork the same. Just change the color and add a volume two to it. And he was like, I mean, you're just changing colors and add in volume two. I mean, that should be what? 50 bucks? And I should have said no, but I was hurting for cash. So I was like, all right. And then that was kind of our thing. Every time he would do a volume three or a volume four or a volume five, it was just 50 bucks for me to change the color, change the number, copy and paste the track list. Not like it was a heavy lift or anything, but still... Was being underpaid, should have charged more. Especially considering what a pain in the ass this guy was to deal with. The last time we worked together, he hit me up, I want to say it was May, maybe early June. He was like, all right, the next one, I wanted to have a 4th of July theme because I'm going to put it out for 4th of July. So we did a whole thing with fireworks and it's going to be a 4th of July theme. I need that track list so I can finish the artwork. He says, no problem, I'll get it to you this weekend. Weekend comes and goes, no track list. I hit him up the following week. Hey, man, I'm still waiting on that track list. Hey, don't worry, I'll get it to you. Another week comes and goes, I don't hear from him. July comes and goes. August comes and goes. September comes and goes. October comes and goes. Don't hear from this guy. At this point, I'm now working at a photo lab where I'm like scanning photos and digitizing film and tape. And I'm working at a public access TV station. So I'm working two jobs. It's like three days before Thanksgiving. And he hits me up at like 11 o'clock at night. And it's just like, here's the track list. Do you think you can get this to me by tomorrow? And at this point, I had enough of this guy's shit. So I just ignored him, which I shouldn't have done. But I just ignored him. Another day goes by, he's blowing up my phone, he's e blowing up my email, sending me multiple emails, multiple text messages, multiple phone calls, wanting to know when I can get that artwork to him. And I finally, I tell him, look, it's two days before Thanksgiving, I'm working two jobs now, 
I'm going out of town for the holidays. I don't have time to work on this. I'm going to be honest. I can't get this to you until after the new year. And then he threw a fit and he was like, well, just send me your Photoshop file and I'll do it myself. And I told him flat out, that ain't going to happen. All right. If you've seen my work for hire agreement, I have it spelled out clearly in there. You don't ever get my project files. This is why. You know, and we're going back and forth. And he's like, I paid you. Those project files are mine. And I'm like, no, they're not. Per copyright law, they're my property. I don't have to give them to you. I even send him uh, a copy of U.S. copyright law and California copyright law so that that way he could see, no, 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 you don't get those project files. Those are mine. I can sell them to you, but I don't have to, right? I also point out that every time he's paid me, I delivered him final artwork, and he hadn't even paid me for the work I had done on this one. And so he started blowing up my phone. He started calling my job and, like, leaving, like, messages on the job answering machine cussing me out and pretending to be a customer saying I gave him bad customer service which I was working by myself I didn't have co-workers so it's not like that did anything he even left my job like a bad Yelp review and when we were talking he was threatening to sue me and I'm like go ahead and sue me we don't have a written contract all we've ever had is a verbal contract which you broke because we were talking about having this come out in July. It's now November. I never agreed to do anything two days before Thanksgiving. So you broke our verbal agreement. We don't have a written agreement. Go ahead and sue me. You're not going to win. So I ended up having to like file a police report against him. And the police department was just like, look, if you want to sue him, go ahead and sue him. But you can't keep harassing him. And I was able to show the police report to Yelp. And they were able to take his review down. And it was just a pain in the ass. And so anytime someone is difficult during the negotiation process, they're going to be even worse as a client. So if someone is going to haggle me over my price and try to shortchange me, I don't even bother because that just means it's going to be a nightmare trying to do business with them. The second worst client I ever had, this person, she, she claimed to be a television producer. I didn't do any due diligence to verify that. I just took her word for it but she claimed to be a television producer. She was pitching a reality show and needed me to cut together a sizzle reel that she can show to networks while she's pitching. So she had all this footage already that she was providing me and she just wanted to edit. I said, let me take a look at the footage first before I agree to anything because I want to see what I have to work with. And so she sends me all these like vignettes and all these like pieces that are already edited. There's already music. There's already lower thirds. I don't know why she didn't just use those, but whatever. And I take a look at all this and I ask her, do you have any of the raw footage? Do you have any of the original footage that was shot for these? And she said, no, this is all I have. And I said, okay, well, these are already edited. So there really isn't anything I can do with this. And she went, oh, no, 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 no. It's really easy. Here's what I want. And then she literally sent me like a PDF. And it was like, from this file, I just want from here to here. From this file, I just want from here to here. And from this file, I just want from here to here. And I was like, that's all you want? And she's like, that's all I want. And I was like, okay. And I quoted her 150 bucks for the work. I send over the video and her first note is, can we change the song? And I'm like, well, that song is in your footage. So no, no, we can't. And she didn't seem to understand that because she was like, well, obviously that song wasn't there when we shot the interview. So why can't you change it now? And I'm trying to explain to her like how video editing works and how all this process works. And she's not understanding it. And for a television producer, that was a huge red flag. But anyway, finally, I had to use an analogy. I told her, well, think of it like we're baking, right? You're, the footage you shoot, the audio you record, the music you overlay, the lower thirds and titles you overlay, your logos. Everything you use to make this video, those are like ingredients. And then when you render the video out, that's like pulling it out of the oven, right? You handed me a loaf of bread and are now asking me to take the eggs out. Uh, I can't really do that, but if you have the ingredients, I can make another one without the eggs. Finally, she understood that reference and was like, damn, I didn't, I didn't know you couldn't change the song. And then her, her second note 
is the, is the one that really threw me for a loop because all the footage she gave me is about this bounty hunter. It was this dude, he was like the youngest bounty hunter in the state of whatever, right? And so she, her second note was, well, this video is all about bounty hunting. And I'm like, yeah, and? She was like, well, he's not a bounty hunter anymore. And so I don't want people to think they're buying a show about a bounty hunter. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the show about? And then she tells me, and I ask her, do you have any footage of that? And she said, no, all I have is what I shared with you. And I asked her point blank. I was like, okay, what would you like me to do? And she was just like, oh, you know, just work your editing magic. And I'm thinking to myself, you do realize it's not actual magic, right? Like I can't just pull footage out of thin air. I can only work with what you give me. But seeing as how she didn't understand the music thing, maybe she didn't understand the whole magic isn't real thing either. So I tell her, well, let me, let me go through the rest of the footage you have and see what I can put together that's close to what you're telling me the show is going to be. So I send over another draft of the video, and she is just like, ah, still too much scripted, not enough reality. No, I don't think this is going to work at all. Thanks for trying, though. And I'm like... Thanks for trying. Bitch, here's your fucking invoice. And that's where the problems... Well, they didn't start there. That's where they finished. Because she was like, well, I'm confused. I can't use the video you gave me, so why would I pay you? So I send her back the PDF she sent me, and I was like, well, here's what you asked me to do. This is exactly what I did in version one of the video that I sent you on this date. So I did everything you asked me to do. Your problems have to do with the footage you provided, which I got no control over. I didn't shoot this. I can only work with what you gave me. She didn't see it that way. We went back and forth, and she ended up ghosting me. Now, my big problem is I didn't have her sign a contract because it was such a small amount. It was 150 bucks. Like, I thought this was going to be something I knock out in two hours. I thought it was going to be an easy payday, so I didn't even bother with the contract. Uh, I've never made that mistake again, and this is also why I have a clause in my contract now that says... If you change your mind about what you're asking me to do, you still got to pay me. I don't have to do it. And you can't say the video doesn't conform to what you need when you're the one who changed your mind about what you needed after the fact. So be careful out there. People suck. You will have difficult clients. You will not walk through life without running into difficult people. You just have to learn from it, learn from your mistakes, and not make those mistakes going forward.